Hey guys, Patrick with Answers the ACS. Well, it's here at last. The Flight Instructor Airplane ACS, as well as revisions to the Private Instrument and Commercial Pilot Airplane ACSs, have been issued on April 1st. The new ACSs have been posted to the FAA's ACS webpage and go into effect May 31st. First on background, this is part of a larger amendment to Parts 61, 63, and 65. The FAA is incorporating by reference IBR, the ACSs, and remaining PTSs into regulation. The final rule has now been published to the Federal Register. The move to IBR the ACSs and PTSs into regulation began in December of 2018 when the Department of Transportation issued a memo titled Review and Clearance of the Guidance Documents. The memo stated that any guidance document issued by an agency must be reviewed by the agency's Office of Chief Counsel. For the FAA, this is the lawyers that issue legal interpretations and in some cases the Office of the General Counsel, which are DOT lawyers. Either of these offices would review the document to ensure various things, such as the document explicitly stating that it is guidance only, not regulatory, and written in plain English, among other things. The memo became law and a final rule issued in December of 2019. Obvious guidance documents from the FAA include advisory circulars and handbooks. However, the ACSs and PTSs were technically considered guidance documents as well. With the advent of this memo and regulation, however, this was no longer possible. As a result, the FAA had to figure out where these documents fit in. This is why the ACSs weren't updated since 2018 and only a few critical ones were issued. The solution was to make these documents regulatory via IBR. Part 61 will now cite the ACSs and PTSs with their exact document number. There have been concerns regarding this, however. If an applicant fails a practical test, since the documents are now regulatory, this failure could be viewed as a regulatory violation. A flight instructor whose student fails a practical test could be in a similar position. Same with an examiner who fails to follow the ACS or PTS to the letter. The FAS provide a reassurance that enforcement action in response to a checkride failure has not been a practice in the past, nor will it be in the future. Although not discussed in the final rule, the reason behind all of this was a directive from the DOT. It's not the FAA's intent to create a new vector for enforcement action. With checkride failure rates approaching 50% in parts of the country, this would easily overload the FAA's resources. Another concern is how the ACSs will be updated. Many commenters express concern that making the ACS and PTS regulatory would excessively slow the ability to update them. The FAA clarified that any updates to the ACS or PTS would have to go through the rulemaking process. The FAA would issue a notice of proposed rulemaking with a comment period. After the comment period closes, they would work on the final rule, which would be issued at some point in the future. The time between this NPRM and final rule was a little over a year. I support this change. Although vectors for feedback existed in the past, a uh, comment period as part of the rulemaking process is much more cut and dry. Although comments aren't guaranteed to be implemented, they must be acknowledged with justification. The slowing down of updates is also a good thing since it allows everyone to get a good handle on the ACS without it changing too frequently. Now onto the more interesting stuff, changes to the existing ACSs. In the grand scheme of things, the changes to the private instrument commercial pilot airplane ACSs are relatively minor and will not greatly affect testing. However, there are some key changes to note. The first is changing the phraseology of the risk elements from a negative action, such as a failure to do something, to a positive one. This is one of the things I opposed in my extensive comment to the NPRM in early 2023. As an example, poor communication is now communication. Exceeding airplane limitations is now airplane limitations. And failure to detect system malfunctions or failures is now detection of system malfunctions or failures. The FAA has now published an ACS companion guide which has expanded information in it. In it, the FAA stated the following concerning this change in the risk elements. Quote, previous editions of the ACS often used elements for evaluation of risk management as encompassing a failure to do something. Many of these failure to act elements mimic skill elements and limited an evaluator's opportunity to thoroughly examine an applicant's understanding of risk management. The FAA reworded risk elements that describe a failure to, or similar phrases, with language permitting an open-ended examination of risk management by the evaluator. In my comment to the NPRM last year, I said that the risk elements are already excessive in number, open-ended, and subjective as they are. They're also not addressed anywhere except for in my materials. If you don't believe me, take a look at the risk management handbook. You won't find much in there. This change only makes that worse. For those of you who are flight instructors or studying to become one, you might remember from the Aviation Instructor's Handbook that one of the characteristics of an effective test is objectivity. In my manuals where I address every element in the ACS, I address each of the risk elements objectively by referencing accidents, accident studies, NASA ASRS reports, case law, and more. This change makes it harder for me to address the risk elements and makes it even harder for applicants and instructors to prepare. Other than that, there are value-added additions. In the private and commercial pilot airplane ACS, 
in area of operation one, task B, owner, operator, and PIC responsibilities concerning airworthiness is a great addition. In area of operation one, task D, cross-country flight planning, a note explicitly permitting computer-generated flight planning has been a long time coming. This is intended to prevent DPEs from prohibiting it. However, we'll see how some of the older DPEs handle that. Other great additions include in area of operation one, task E, national airspace systems, special VFR requirements. In area of operation two, task B, flight deck management, securing items and cargo. In area of operation two, task C, engine starting, limitations associated with starting. In area of operation eight, basic instrument maneuvers in the private pilot airplane ACS, as well as area of operation four, task B, recovery from unusual flight attitudes in the instrument airplane ACS. You'll find a large number of detailed hair splitting risk elements, as I call them. The drive for this was likely the large number of accidents related to inadvertent flight into IMC or loss of control in IMC. Really, these are just contributing causes to these accidents, and we will address them as such. In the instrument airplane ACS, you'll find the occasional new element added here or there. In the coming weeks and months, we'll be updating our manuals to be in line with the new ACSs. Now, what about the Flight Instructor ACS? Although the differences between the Flight Instructor PTS and ACS are significant, they're not overbearing. However, if you're getting close to taking your CFI initial check ride, I would say it's better to do it now under the PTS rather than the ACS. The reason for this is not so much the ACS itself, but how DPs will use it. Back when the private pilot airplane ACS came out in 2016, there were a number of DPs that just didn't read the instructions and evaluated every element. This resulted in all-day private pilot check rides that more closely resembled a CFI check ride. Since the ACS has been out for eight years now, this is less likely to happen, but there will still be challenges in the transition regardless. In terms of content, with the exception of Area of Operation 1, select Tasks in Area of Operation 2 and Area of Operation 4, all tasks in the Flight Instructor Airplane ACS essentially match that of the Private and Commercial Pilot Airplane ACS. The only differences are that instructional knowledge is required, the last knowledge element reads common errors related to this task, and the last skill element reads analyze and correct common errors related to this task. As a result, our preliminary plan for addressing the Flight Instructor Airplane ACS is to only address Area of Operation 1, the differing tasks in Area of Operation 2, and Area of Operation 4. We'll then point to our existing answers to the ACS books for the remaining tasks. To address common errors, this will likely be handled through lesson plans, which will complement the books similar to our checkride workbooks currently. And to handle instructional knowledge, this will be taken care of in Area of Operation 1 and Area of Operation 4. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was informative. Uh, I didn't expect this to be our first video, but that's how things go sometimes. If you have a check ride coming up, download our app from the App Store where you can access our manuals that address every element in the ACS. A link to that's in the description. Until next time, fly safe.